Testing, testing. Can everyone hear me? It's pretty low. Testing, testing. Hello? Is it on? Hello, hello. Testing, testing. Is this good? Awesome. Bismillah. Okay. Salaam alaikum, everyone. Glad you could all make it uh, to our second in person event. So, yeah, another sold out one. So, you guys are the lucky ones that made it. Funny enough, we had like 200 people on the waiting list, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and this event actually sold out in what was it? In less than an hour. So, anyone who was on the Slack, props to you. You had like a couple of days' notice. Everyone else, mashallah, you guys were quick. So today's event is themed path, Pathways to Software Engineering. And we have three amazing guests with us today who will be sharing with us their journey um, in software engineering. So a little bit about myself. My name is Abshir Ahmed. Um, I'm a software engineer, but my passion lies in um, Somalis in tech and helping my people. Uh, so as a result of me um, struggling Throughout my journey, I thought, you know what, I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that feel this pain. So let's create a community where we can kind of bring our, our people together and they can strive and, and grow together. So, um, and here we are. There's at least 100 people here. So it's, I'm, I'm really excited uh, for the future as well, inshallah. Um, the agenda, we're late as usual. Uh, we was meant to start at 7 o'clock. It's 7.20 or 7.30 rather. It is what it is. But we, we move on. Our mission. Again, essentially, it's to kind of build that, that space for our people, uh, create that safe space where we can all grow together, share our journey, and, and essentially maybe bridge gaps and, and, and create long-lasting relationships. Um, again, kind of spoke about this a little bit, the difficulties in starting in this, in this weird world of tech where it's somewhat not diverse as it could be, but we're here. And uh, we'll, we'll bring a little bit of color into the scene, inshallah. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to start off. We're going to start off with our first speaker, which is Hodan, um, who will share with us her journey, inshallah. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me? Okay. So hi, everyone. My name is Hodan. I am a software engineer at News UK, and I'm going to talk about how I got into tech and how you guys can get into tech too. Okay, so it's up, oh, down, okay. Okay, so what did I do before tech? So I was an A-level student. I had zero coding experience, zero experience in IT or tech. I did humanities-based subjects. I did the politics, the sociologies, the histories. So that's what I was doing. Um, for university, I didn't meet any of my applied universities offers. So results day was a bit, it was a bit of a mad one. And um, I got a deferred entry for Brunel um, for a bachelor's in computer science um, through clearing. But I'll go into that more detail later about why I decided to get into tech. Uh, so I took a gap year to have a good think about what I, was, what I wanted to do. And I was working um, Christmas shifts at Mark Spencer's Cafe. So that was beforehand. Oh, again, sorry. So why did I decide to get into tech? So my initial career plan was to ace my A-levels, do the politics, ooh, the politics, the sociology, and the history A-level, get a degree in politics and history, and then do a law conversion course and become a solicitor. That was my initial plan. Obviously, that didn't, it didn't come to plan. I'm here today as a software engineer. So it kind of, I decided to get into tech instead. So what got me interested in tech? 
it's a bit different compared to a lot of people. So I did, the reason why I got into Berk was because I didn't have any alternatives at the time. So I didn't have any more essays in me. I wasn't passionate about the degree of doing like politics and history. And I wasn't as passionate about being a solicitor. I wasn't hundred percent sold on the idea. Um, it was going into tech was suggested by a family member, like my cousin right in the front, Nadia, thanks. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much why I got interested in tech. I had a very, very pigeonhole view about how my life was supposed to turn out um, since I just like started my A-levels to uni. But now I can actually name actual benefits to tech. So yeah. So what were my, what were my options to get into tech? So I was able to drag myself through my A-levels with pretty okay grades. I was able to get into any uni that didn't require like A-level maths or computer science. So I was able to get into like universities like Goldsmith or Brunel, and I was able to get that deferred entry into Brunel. But I wasn't, again, 100% sold on the idea of going to, getting a degree just to become a developer because I knew there were other options. Like I could do a boot camp or an apprenticeship. So for a boot camp, I could have fund, funded it myself and get a junior position afterwards, or I could do an apprenticeship where I was getting paid from day one and getting a position afterwards as well. So I signed up to make this apprenticeship and got a junior software engineer position at News UK. Sorry about that. Um, so my apprentice journey, I'm gonna talk, in this slide, I'm gonna be talking about what I did as an apprentice, but it's also similar to my day-to-day. -day. So what I did for my apprenticeship um, scheme was that I did a boot camp for three months and I did projects as well that mirrored real life engineering teams. Um, and we also did exams and um, what do you call it? Qualifications to prove our competencies in specific coding languages. So I did a qualification for web development in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And there was also other exams about software methodologies. And we also had a portfolio to complete that showed all of our real life, um, real work examples to also prove our competencies. So that's what I did for my apprenticeship to get a pass. But what my typical engineering day to day, we have meetings. So we have the daily standups where we talk about like what we were doing, the progress on our work, any blockers, any announcements. Um, we also had like refinements where we'll go through the backlog of work we're supposed to do, um, try and refine the ticket to see if it is accurate, like relevant to do now. Um, estimate the amount of time it'll take to do it and um, if the criteria of it to be considered done is accurate as well. And we also had retros where we'd go over what we did in the two-week sprint and see if it was, um, what do you call it, review and see what we did well, what we didn't do well, what, what we can start doing. Um, for coding, we did like, you would like code by yourself or co code in a pair or you can also do mobbing sessions. So that's what in my team, mainly we kind of just did pairing. We didn't really do mobbing. Um, and we did showcases where we'll just display what we've been doing within the two week sprint. Um, as an apprentice, I had like one full day dedicated to completing my portfolio and prepping for exams. So that, that's a typical day for an engineer, or for me, it's a typical day. So you're probably tired of hearing about my journey and what I do, and you're probably wondering how you can get into tech. So this slide, I provide a bunch of links for boot camps I recommend and apprenticeship schemes. Some of them are specific for specific industries. So like the AWS Restart is specifically for cloud engineering or for data science, you can do Cambridge Spark. Um, don't worry, I'm pretty sure they'll send you the presentation slides later and there's links on there too. And to find apprenticeship, providers near you, I say definitely check out the government website. They'll provide you a link. You just put in your postcode and you'll find ones around you because it all depends on what your needs are. You probably want someone that's a training provider that's closer to you. You probably want a training provider that's entirely remote. It all depends. So definitely check out that slide. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna talk about tips now. Um, yeah. Tip number one, this is my biggest tip and I think everyone to listen, no matter what industry you are, it is okay to make mistakes. 
and it's okay to ask for help as well. The most difficult part for me wasn't the coding or learning the new language or learning the new jargon. It was just being okay to ask for help and being okay to make mistakes. Because not only are you expected to make mistakes, you're also expected to ask for help when you're stepping into a new industry. Um, is I think it's a common issue that most people face when they're trying to get into a new field, like, oh, we're going back to square one again. I have to ask the silly questions. You have to ask the silly questions. Um, but yeah, you cannot improve yourself without challenging yourself. Okay. Number two, always be willing to learn something new. I think this is also very important. You shouldn't be complacent. You shouldn't be complacent. The tech is always developing and there's always a change in demand for different skills. Um, you will be working on teams that use different languages, on different infrastructures, on different projects. It's just the nature of it. It's just the nature of the industry. I'm not telling you to learn 15 different languages, but you just need to be willing to um, learn, have that type of mindset. Another one is cl closed mouths don't get fed. So you have to ask for that promotion. You have to ask for that promotion, you have to ask for that opportunity, and you have to ask for that um, position. You have to speak up and ask for what you want, and you have to have the confidence to put yourself out there. And network, network, network. You can't get into tech without talking to the people in tech. So you need to talk to people that are in the industry. You need to be able to find out the available jobs, the type of roles that are there, the opportunities, to find out if the role even interests you. So yeah, attend events like this, join the Somalis in Tech Slack channel and join other social networking events that are similar to this specifically for tech. So anyways, that's me. These are my socials. I post blogs. I posted a blog about my apprenticeship scheme um, makers. So definitely check that out. Um, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I have like one TikTok, but I'm trying to get out there. So yeah, that's all for me. Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fadon. That was absolutely insightful. Those tips were top notch, 100%. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So if we go to the next slide, we're going to go swiftly on to Abdurrahman. Can everyone hear me? Uh, first and foremost, welcome everyone to the second in person Somalis in Tech event. And welcome to Trainline. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Zoe and Jack over there for all their hard work and setting this up for providing us with all the facilities. So, yeah, so shout out to them and also shout out to Abshad for kind of facilitating this event. And obviously, Marianne and the rest of the SIT team. Cool. So, um, my name is Abdurrahman. I'm a software engineer here at Trainline. Um, I will talk about Trainline in a bit, but um, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Actually, let me just talk about Trainline. Sorry. So, mm -hmm. Trainline obviously is a <laughs> Trainline is a uh, online uh, train uh, retailer. We have got over 100 million customers who book trains here in the UK, abroad in Amsterdam, in Brussels, in uh, Italy, like all over Europe, basically. So, uh, it's it's pretty exciting. We have a lot of interesting projects from like um, building highly scalable web applications to building backends that can kind of handle like 100 million plus requests. So it's quite, it's quite interesting. So I definitely recommend everyone apply. We're hiring, by the way, for front-end roles, back-end roles, cloud. So if you're interested, please, please do apply. Cool. So I'll go to the next slide. Um, a bit about me. What exactly am I doing here at Trainline? So I am a software engineer within the web platform team. What does that actually mean? So um, Trainline kind of split up their teams in horizontals and verticals. Verticals are like teams that kind of focus on features, like pumping out features for customers. Like for instance, like how do we win more, uh, more customers in the UK? How do we, we win more customers in uh, Europe and abroad um, and so on and so forth. So I sit within platform. So what we do is we look after all of the web applications. So from the booking flow to my account, to login, to all sorts of stuff. So one thing I'm working on right now is like, um, you know, uh, tech improvement. So migrating all of our applications to TypeScript. Um, our team's also looking at uh, creating a new GraphQL gateway to kind of uh, replace our existing API gateways that exist right now. So there's a lot of interesting tech challenges that we're trying to solve at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities. So if anyone is interested, give me a shout, please, and we'll definitely uh, have a word. 
Um, so this slide is a bit generic. It's asking what is software engineering. Um, quick show of hands. Um, how many people here are familiar with what software engineering is? Show of hands. Cool. Can someone give me a definition of what software engineering means to them, please? I know I don't know if I was meant to do this, but yeah. Anyone here? Anyone wanna shout out? Yes, Mr. Brother. Yes. Nice to meet you, brother. <laughs> oh, do you want to give him a mic? Perfect, 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 perfect. lovely. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, what I would say is a uh, software engineer would be someone who sort of uh, looks after, builds, creates um, code that can then be used in, as an application, as a software, essentially. Yeah. Great. Great answer. Can we please give him a round of applause, please? Before, yeah, so I think we're all in agreement here that software engineering is essentially like, you know, it's about building applications, but what does it really mean, right? So there are many different companies within many different domains. So there's Netflix, who look after film, there's Uber, who look after travel, Trainline here, we look after rail and travel across, you know, UK and Europe. So all these companies are particularly solving problems in a particular domain, right? So software engineering, in my opinion, and in, I guess everyone's opinion here, it's about like, um, using the power of technology to solve a particular problem in a particular domain. So all these symbols and logos you've seen on here are simply different technologies that we use to solve these problems. So there's AWS, as you can see, a huge cloud platform, uh, great, great services. There's Kubernetes, React, Terraform. So in terms of technologies, there are different awesome technologies across the whole stack. And when I say stack, I mean front end, back end, and cloud. So, um, this is where here. So in terms of the field within software engineering, um, you know, uh, are there, is there, sorry. So are there any software engineers here right now? Yeah, okay, a couple of people raising their hands. How many web engineers are there? Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, cool. So the people are familiar. So okay, so these are the different fields that kind of exist within software engineering. So there's web, uh, which is the part I sit in. We kind of focus on building applications that users can access to, you know carry out some sort of activity or task. So, you know, like if you think Amazon.com, if you think Netflix.com, Uber, all these companies, they have web apps that users like ourselves, like everyone here can access and kind of use, right? And on the other side, you have mobile, which is another sort of way, you know, to access these applications. And I guess most companies have these uh, kind of apps built. And with mobile, there's, I guess, two different, it's quite an interesting space. I'm not too experienced with mobile, I'll be honest. Are there any mobile engineers here, by the way? Um, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's not very popular, to be honest, but yeah, um, that, that's another area. Backend is super, super important. Like, it's where I guess all the logic sits, right? So you have all these different applications. You've got um, a lot of data that needs to, for instance, needs to be kind of handled, kind of um, sent to the client. So how do we kind of handle these requests? How do we handle a request when a user wants to access a particular web page or when a user wants to see like a list of films or if you search on Netflix for like, I don't know, uh, the crown for instance how does that actually come to your like screen so this is all sorted out in the back end data is another interesting space um again i'm not i'm not in data so i can't really talk about it, but that's definitely another space and infrastructure the most important part the part that holds everything together um super super exciting and um, so these are all the different fields and train and are hiring for all these different like parts of the software so if you're interested hit me up give me a shout all right we'll sort something out Cool, so in terms of uh, learning about these different fields, these are some of the resources that I'd recommend. So um, Free Code Camp is probably the, one of the best resources I've seen online. I personally used it. Um, I'll talk a bit about, about my story later, but I personally use Free Code Camp. I've got a friend called Samata, who I don't think he's here today, but he's also used Free Code Camp as well. Um, Algo Expert, Lead Code, these are different sorts of platforms that teach a different sort of uh, things like more problem solving, more algorithm, algorithmic sort of programming, you know, so I uh, definitely recommend those as well. Um, I believe we'll try to send these links out uh, in the Slack channel, so do join the SIT Slack channel, please. Uh, cool. So here I'll be talking a bit about my personal journey, how I got to where I am today. Um, I'm still starting out, if I'm being honest with you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like some guru or some expert, uh, to be honest, but... Uh, in terms of how I got there, um, you know, I went to university, I did computer science um, standard. I mean, that, that's what it says here, but I'll talk about what really happened. Uh, I then landed a role at Barclays um, as a contract uh, deployment engineer. Um, one of my friends over there, Toga, shout out to Toga, 
he gave me the job in Manitoba. I then moved on to BT. Uh, you know, I was in Ipswich for like a couple of years, actually, two years, almost two years, really. Um, I had an interesting time at BT. Are there any BT people here, by the way? Okay, so I can't say anything bad about BT. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, so I was at BT. I then moved on to Gamba. So in terms of what I really did to get to where I was, um, I guess my story started back um, when I finished school. Uh, so I grew up in Newham. East London, um, I don't know if anyone here is from, any East Londoners here? My people, so I'm not. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, so I grew up in uh, Newham, uh, went to school there. I didn't do that great in school, to be honest. I left with four GCSEs, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but then I went uh, on a little trip to Burra and had a case. I went back home, yeah. yeah I went back home, uh, kind of like learned about my, you know, um, traditions, kind of understood like how people are living back home, you know? And that kind of opened my eyes because when I was there, uh, seeing like the way in which people were studying and how motivated they were and you know like the opportunities how the opportunities back home are scarce so that made me think like yo I've got a mad opportunity to take uh, you know like I've got a mad opportunity like back in the UK so I came back I went to college I uh, did a BTEC uh, you know in, in IT I got all distinctions then went to university went to King's College London graduated 88 percent and then from there moved on to Barclays and then that's when I started like thinking yo you know, I'm not really programming right now. How do I get in? And that's when I started going on. If I go back here, uh, wait, oops, wrong way. If I go here, that's when I started on free code camp. And I learned the fundamentals from the beginning. Even though I did a computer science degree, it didn't really help much if I'm being real because I was just a bookworm, just trying to get the highest grade possible. Wasn't really learning, you know, I was just memorizing a bunch of stuff, if I'm being honest with you. Um, and it didn't really help me. So uh, having a noise, technical. So yeah, so that's kind of like, um, how I went. And then I was at BT. Uh, I was in Ipswich on the security team. I did a few rotations. I went to the continuity team as well. Um, it was uh, an interesting role, um, but yeah, I found it to be quite slow for me personally, if I'm being honest. Um, so that's why I moved on uh, to Gemba. And that's, I feel like that's where my career personally accelerated. You know, Gemba is a startup. Uh, so for those of you who, who aren't aware, there are two different types of companies. There are three types, sorry. There are startups, which are like small companies with like not that many people. You then have these large corporations like, um, I guess, Barclays, BT, which have like millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people, yeah, where you're like literally just a small ant in the ocean, you know? That's kind of where I was before. And Gemba gave me the opportunity to really make a big impact, really learn about different technologies. You know, I was doing some mad stuff, man. Like, I'm not, uh, like man, everyone, you know? So I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure what I kind of can't say now, but yeah, I was doing some mad stuff like, um, from front end to back end to cloud, you know, deploying stuff on Kubernetes, like, and then here I am now at Trainline, and I'm literally working on apps that are being used by 100 million people. And I want everyone here to come join me, like, seriously, <laughs> come join me, you know, like, um, but yeah, so in terms of um, what can, what, you know, I mean, I mentioned my computer science degree earlier. Um, how many people here have done computer science, by the way? Thank you. Oh, okay, for those of you who did, shout out to you lot. For those of you who didn't, you're not, really, you're not missing out on much, if I'm being honest with you. Um, sorts of stuff you, you know, learn on a computer science degree, what I learned anyway, uh, computer systems, so understanding the fundamentals of computing, data structures, very, very important. Um, you know, anyone here know what data structures are? Okay, so data structures is the way to, you know, I guess it's a way to, kind of collect your data. It allows you to define that relation, relationships between your data and like, I guess, operations that you can apply on it. So obviously there's stuff like arrays, linked lists, uh, graphs, trees, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's, I guess, that's like a story for another day. If anyone's interested, give me a shout. We can go into proper detail. Um, logic, super important with computing and programming in general. Um, you will be creating large scale distributed systems, applications that are being used by millions of people across the world. So you need to, that we need to kind of write code that lets us uh, scale fast, let, lets like millions of people use at the same time without crashing and stuff like that, you know? So it's quite, it's quite important. And AI is another one. And there's a lot of different modules. So if anyone is interested, um, I, think it's, I think it's worth it, to be honest, but it's not that, it's not, it's not a requirement in my opinion, in my, in my personal opinion, at least. But in terms of, um, you know, would, would I do it again? Uh, yes, but not for the degree, actually. Uh, the reason I'll do it again is simply for the uh, purpose of networking. Like, I met some great people at university, uh, and I feel like 
your network is your network. Like real talk, like, uh, you know, in terms of the way this industry works, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you, like, obviously, not going to need it, not gonna, it's not really a detriment because, like I said, there are people here who have, you know, mashallah, you know, who have got into the field without a degree. My friend Samatar, you know, Hodan, you know, I'm sure there's a few of you here as well. You know, Omar as well, Mr. Apple. Um, I know Muhammad, Abdurrahman, like, there's a lot of people here that did it, Allah Mubarak. So it's definitely possible. Um, but yeah, I think networking is super important. So if you didn't go uni, just network in your workplaces, network in, you know, make friends everywhere. Um, ne don't burn bridges because, uh, you know, you will cross paths with people. So that's like uh, a tip for me, I guess. Um, in terms of, um, I guess that's it for me, but in terms of tips, uh, number one thing, just learn. Like this industry, as Adam said, it's like, it's, it's changing a lot. Like technologies are always changing, especially in the web space. Like a couple of years ago, people using jQuery. Uh, does anyone know what, know what jQuery is? That's good. It's good. It's good that you don't know what it is. Okay, it's good. Because um, now obviously there's stuff like React and, you know, Angular, which I, actually I don't hope anyone's using Angular, but React, you know, React, uh, AWS, all these new tools that are kind of like, that are kind of being used to build large scale distributed systems. So learn, uh, with, with, with learning, I'd say, like just set a plan, um, decide where you want to get into, front end, back end, DevOps, just have a plan really, like just make sure you plan, 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 because that's ultimately what's going to let you uh, kind of have a routine and you know have like goals to work towards and kind of keep you on track and on point for your I guess goals you know so just learn and I guess the next one would be oh yeah plan okay I'm skipping my slides that's cool plan so yeah so ultimately just set a plan and actually execute it like there are you know even me myself I'm guilty of this like I'll set myself a plan and I won't really stick to it I'll be like yeah I'll do it tomorrow or yeah okay 30 minutes of coding every day yeah I'll do it oh let me skip it today but just stick with it like literally like consistency pays off like, well, like consistency 100% pays off. So I uh, definitely recommend having a plan and learning. And the last one tip from me, network. Like, we've got a great opportunity here. Like I remember when I was looking for my first job, this community was not a thing. Like there was, there was no SIT. Like there weren't that many communities out there that could kind of bridge the gap for me. Ultimately me being like a first generation immigrant, like how many first generation immigrants are there? How many people were, like, everyone basically, right? Like let's be with everyone, right? So like, the struggles are mad, didn't it? So obviously for us, I think networking is key. Like we've got, you know, network, 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 you know, um, huge opportunity. So yeah, if anyone, uh, I guess I'll close off with, if anyone is looking for a role, hit me up, yeah? And as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa salamu alaykum. Khayyad wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Khayyad wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abdurrahman. I think there's going to be a high recruitment drive after this, after this talk. <laughs> Jazakallah khair. Over to you, Yusuf. Assalamualaikum. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, my phone off. It's green. Is that better? No. Hold it. It's fine. Hello, testing. Cool. Um, Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Ma ba'd, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, jazakal khair for coming. Um, so it's good to talk tech. Um, oops, backwards. There we go. Um, so my name is Yusuf. Um, I'm going to talk really fast because I realized I have one. You can't hear it. How's that? Ah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk fast because I realized I have one too many slides. Um, so inshallah, if I skip anything, which I probably will do, um, just feel free to ask me during Q&A, um, inshallah. Um, yeah, so I work as a software engineer, um, currently contracting. Um, recently started at a little known company called AstraZeneca. Um, I'm still onboarding, so it's still early days, but um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about, I guess, what I do there. Um, I'm mostly a full stack web dev. Um, so I do front end, back end mostly. 
with a bit of cloud. Um, this particular role has a bit of data engineering. So I haven't done data engineering um, in the past, but because of the nature of the role, um, I'm dabbling in it. Um, so I'm working within the, the data science team that works on oncology, so cancer research. Um, I don't do data science, but I help the data, science, uh, data scientists with um, deploying and making the machine learning models usable. Yeah, uh, usable by um, uh, the, the users of our systems, which are scientists, essentially. Yeah, still, still learning um, even after all this time. But yeah, so um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about my journey, how I got into tech. Um, I, the way I explained it was I took the conventional route, but also not really. Um, and hopefully that will start to make sense uh, as I talk. Um, but I did a computer science degree as well um, uh, at a company at a university called City, um, City University of London. Um, so I've had to kind of create this little diagram because otherwise explaining with just words, people get confused. Even I get confused, I'm trying to remember it. But um, yeah, so first row is just the number of years, one, two, three, four. Um, second row is what normal people would do on the three-year bachelors. Um, so you would do your first year in your first year, second, so second module is in your second year, third, third year module is in your third year. Um, and the last row is what I did. Um, so when I started, I joined uh, on a three-year bachelor's um, and they told us we have three options. We could either do three-year bachelor's or we could do a one-year placement um, like most students do of between your second and third year. Um, or you could do something that they call the professional pathway scheme um, where they stretched your second and third year modules over three years. Um, so you can see the first year stayed the same, but then my second year modules took a year and a half and my third year modules took a year and a half. Um, so these were the same modules that everybody else is doing, but just less per year. Um, but the caveat was you'd be working second, third and fourth year um, alongside your studies. Um, so you'd still end up with a four year degree, um, but you'd leave with three years of experience. Um, so that's kind of what I did. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, because I didn't even know about it when I was, when I was applying. Um, so Alhamdulillah. Um, um, so just to kind of overlay, I guess, the things that I did during that same period of time. Um, um, I applied to a bunch of places during my first year. Um, didn't get into many engineering roles, but I managed to get a student TA um, teaching assistant role at, within the Department of Computer Science. Um, so I was kind of helping out um, teaching assistants during tutorials. Um, and uh, I was usually helping out TAs or PhD, PhD students kind of help um, deliver tutorials after the lectures. Um, so it was quite nice doing that because it helped me kind of solidify what I'd learned. Um, you can't really teach something you don't know. Um, so it kind of teaches you where your gaps are in your knowledge. Um, so that was quite quite good, alhamdulillah. Um, and then during that time, um, I applied to an internship at a company called Find My Past. Um, so again, I applied to loads of internships, um, Google, Apple, the usual stuff. Um, but they're very competitive. Um, so I, I either got interviews and they didn't work out or I didn't even hear back to begin with. Um, but I heard back from this company called Time I Passed and this was not for a technical role, this is for a product development role. Um, at the time I was really into startups and you know um, MVPs and all that stuff. Um, so I thought this would be a nice way to kind of like learn more about validating ideas, um, how do companies come up with um, what they should work on, what features they should work on, um, stuff like that. Um, so I, I did that during the summer after my second year um, and that was a three month, uh, three month internship. And then towards the end of that, I realized I need to find something for my third year uh, as part of the scheme. Um, and I applied again, um, but managed to, I, I figured like I might as well try and get, I like working here, I might as well try and get an engineering role here if I can. Um, so I kind of booked a meeting with the CTO um, who in initially interviewed me. Um, and I told him, hey, you know, like I like working here but I'm doing a scheme at university. I need a role for my next year. Um, is, could I join the engineering team um, on like a part-time, three quarter time basis? Um, and he was like, I don't see why not. We have the capacity, but you're still gonna have to do the in technical interview. Um, so they got me to do that. Um, and then Alhamdulillah, I managed to join them. Um, so I stayed with them almost for the next two years, uh, give or take. Um, and that provided me with a really great foundation um, for my career in general. Um, so that was a really good team. Um, they had really good practices. They did TDD, test-driven development. They did pair programming. Um, I kind of moved around various teams, um, doing everything from front end and back end. Um, they started off with, they were migrating away from a C-sharp.net system toward, towards Node.js and Elixir. 
microservices with the React on the front end and GraphQL thrown in there as well. Um, so it was kind of like jumping into the deep end, but there were really great people there. Um, so it was really nice to kind of like get that start. Um, and I don't think I would know half the stuff I know now if it wasn't for the people that I, that I worked with there. Um, and Alhamdulillah, just to kind of like uh, point back to Abdelhamad's point, most of what I learned was in this, uh, like at work as opposed to university, as well as um, doing the three code camp tutorials that I needed to figure out the stuff for work. Um, so most of the most learning that people will tell you come, does not necessarily technically come from the degree. Um, the degree is more useful for like the social element of it and the networking element of it. Um, and it's very easy to get, not easy, but it's very doable um, to get into the industry with that one. Um, so this brings me to my first two tips. Sometimes just ask for the first one. Um, and this reverses to the fact that if I hadn't asked for that engineering role, I wouldn't have got it. Um, they, the engineering team did not do internships. Um, if I went onto the website um, and tried to find a role there at the same company, there wasn't one. Um, so this was not something that was available, right? Like this was not an opportunity that somebody could find by going onto the careers page. Um, so sometimes it's worth just kind of like asking um, and worst case scenario is they say, they say no. Um, and you're not really, you haven't lost anything, right? You, the world hasn't ended. It's just, it didn't work out. But now you're certain, you know, at least you're certain that that, that door is closed. Um, um, and yeah, like it's, it's, it's just worth remembering that not every opportunity is going to be in front of you or apparent. Sometimes you have to like knock on random doors or send cold emails. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. Second tip is actually before I move on, I want to give a quick shout out uh, because a lot of the people that I worked at, I worked with at Find My Past now work at Trainline. Um, fun fact. So those of you who work here, give my regards to uh, Joaquin, Richard Cotts, Sean Rodriguez, and Tiago Silva. Um, so I did loads of pair programming with them. Um, and they actually helped me a lot while I was, while I was, while I was at the company. Um, so I just thought I'd kind of give props to them um, and others like them um, that have helped a lot. Um, yeah, learn to be uncomfortable. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to do when I was teaching was get better at speaking in front of people. Um, so if you're speaking to 30 students who you've never met, um, that's a really good start, right? Um, so, you know, over that year, it kind of became easier and easier and easier. Um, and then over time, you kind of like pick up things that um, you forget, you forget that you used to be uncomfortable, right? Um, but that only happens with time and that only happens by putting yourself in that position. Um, okay, so, and then I had the opportunity in that little gap, the blue one, um, to do a summer internship uh, at CERN um, in Switzerland, um, which again was bottom of the list. Like I applied to Google, Uber, like Apple, didn't get into any of them, but I somehow got into CERN. Um, so that was fun. I did some Java, um, the only time that I've done Java in my career. Um, but yeah, that was, that was good. It was an interesting experience. Um, um, the other thing that was really instrumental in my personal development was uh, helping out and running the tech society at City. Um, so when I started university, we didn't have a tech society. I really wanted one. Um, and I ended up going to loads of startup events as if I was filling some sort of void. Um, but then in my second year, I managed to kind of like, with the help of a friend that I met at university, um, start the tech society there. And we hosted, you know, events like this where we, in, you know, invited um, industry people to talk about their work. Um, we hosted workshops, uh, we hosted hackathons, um, and these were the kind of the places where you meet people, right, and you make connections. Um, and these people end up, you know, working at other places like Google and Microsoft, and they end up being somebody that, there that you can either get referrals from or help you out with your CVs. Um, and things like that, you know. So I definitely would not be anywhere near where I am if it wasn't for the people that I've met um, along the way. Um, and this is, I want to just throw this image out there because um, this is one of, one of the events or two of the events, uh, two of the hackathons uh, that I organized um, with a team. Um, so some of these hackathons were like really large, right? So um, like the bottom middle picture um, in the onesies, and they actually flew in from Barcelona for the event. Um, so like you had like people coming down from like various um, universities and the student hackathon community within the university is something else that was quite strong um, and I think it's still still going strong today um, and you know you had a sponsor called MLH Major League Hacking who kind of like helped students out organizing these events um, and you know you end up meeting loads of people um, but the other reason why I wanted to um, share this image is how many black people can you count on this photo, let alone Somalis? 
you know, and it was really difficult. It was really difficult to find Somalis to come to these events. You know, I was, it was really difficult to organize these events. Uh, this, particular, this particular hackathon took about seven months to put together and cost about 7K for like a weekend event. Um, so it was like people literally come down from Manchester and Oxford and like um, these other universities um, and you'd go to their hackathons as well. Um, and you wouldn't meet many Somalis, maybe like one or two or three. Um, so I just wanted to contrast those photos with the room today um, and say, say, you know, we've come a long way, alhamdulillah. Um, this was only five years ago, I think, 2017, 2017, 2018. Um, so alhamdulillah, you know, like make sure you make, the, make use of hackathons, make use of workshops, make use of these events that you have here today because it's very easy to um, not realize the opportunities that you have when you don't know what to compare it to. Um, you know, like I was going to these kinds of events, but nobody looks like you. Um, so alhamdulillah, it's good, to, it's good to have these opportunities. So, so shout out to Somalis in Tech um, and Trainline and the companies like that are helping kind of facilitate these kinds of events. Um, so these are some of the sponsors uh, of the hackathons I, I went to and organized. Um, and you have to remember like these, these companies are there to, they send hiring managers and they also send engineers. So they send engineers to kind of help the people um, um, working on their projects and they send hiring managers because they want to recruit from these events. Um, so I have friends, uh, I've, I've gotten jobs out of hackathons. I have friends who've gotten jo jobs out of hackathons. Um, and you also notice that um, Find My Past is in the list. Um, I managed to swindle them as a sponsor for one of our events. Um, and Richard, Co Richard Cotts, who actually, the guy, one of the guys I mentioned earlier, and he was actually at, at that event, um, just helping out the students with their, with their code and stuff. Um, so shout out to him again. Um, so yeah, tip number three, go to events, go to meetups, go to um, it's, it's, it's It's one of the best ways to actually learn and um, benefit from, from the industry. Um, after that, I graduated. I spent just over a year at a startup, um, which was quite insightful, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then I've spent um, the last couple of years contracting uh, different places. Um, so working at a startup, um, you get to wear various different hats um, and you don't really have a choice but to learn. Um, you, you know, it's quite, it can be, can be quite diff different to work, working at the larger company where in a startup you, you pick up a ticket and you don't actually know how to solve it. Like part of, part of the ticket is learning the technology that you need to solve this thing, right? Um, so it's, it's very, it can be very different depending on where you're, where you're working and you're kind of first forced to learn. Um, so you, you have this like really accelerated learning experience. Um, when I joined, um, I was working on some projects that were only front end because the back end had already been built. Um, and I had to kind of dig into CSS, which I hated, but at the end of like the three months, I was very comfortable with it. You know, it was CSS grid and Flexbox, um, are like my friends now, but in the beginning they were like, I hate you. Um, but yeah, um, after that, I did loads of full stack stuff there, microservices, Python stuff. Um, and it was a startup, so you're, it's naturally very chaotic and very fast. Um, but the upside of that is you're learning a lot in a short period of time, right? It's very easy at a slower company to also be slow in your development. Um, but in a, in a startup, as long as you're making the most of the experience, um, you can learn a lot in a short period of time. But you can also, you can also go further in a, um, um, you can also go further if you stay at that company for a while. Um, um, and yeah, you get to work very closely with teams that you otherwise wouldn't. I worked very closely with marketing and, and, and design and legal even and, and accounting because we had the marketplace. So we had to kind of like generate PDFs, um, billing PDFs for like our, our customers, um, which was being done manually by the accountant at the time. So you end up building features for like various different parts of the team, uh, the company um, and having to work closely with them. Um, which isn't always the case at the larger companies. Um, and they have very different working practices as well. So smaller companies do things differently to bigger companies. Um, um, so it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and these are some of the places that I worked um, uh, during my contracting. Um, if you have questions specifically about contracting, feel free to ask um, during the Q&A. But if you're just starting out, it's not really something that I'd recommend going into. Um, I think it's perm roles. Uh, the main reason for that is just, just to get a, kind of get it out of the way is contracts, uh, companies that contract you do not really invest too much into you because they're there to do a specific job and then it's a mass lemma. Um, whereas if you're a permanent employee, they have a vested interest in, in, in you staying at the company long-term, which means they will help you learn and grow um, a lot more. Um, so yeah, if people have questions about this, feel free to, to ask later, inshallah. But yeah, one thing I do recommend though is working at both small and large companies um, because you learn different things in each of them. Um, if you've only worked at a big company, and you then want to go start your own startup. If you, you start to build um, a CI/CD pipeline for a month, 
that's the first thing you do, it's probably not a good idea because you don't even know if your idea is valid or not. Um, so there's very different ways of thinking and very different ways of working at startups versus large companies. And people often ask which one should I start with? And I say, it doesn't really matter. Just do whichever you're more comfortable with, but try to work at both at some point um, in your career. Um, uh, tip number five, uh, onboard yourself if needed. Um, and always ask questions. So the reason I say that is because not all companies are made equal um, and not all onboarding experiences are made equal. Some companies are really good at it. Um, the first two weeks, you might have like tons of stuff in your calendar with various team members. This person's showing you the code. This other person's showing you the, you know, how the infrastructure works. This other person's explaining the organizational structure of the company. And other companies, you just have one meeting with the manager and it's like, okay, here's a link. You know, let me know if you have any questions. And so sometimes you have to like kind of go out of your way to um, speak to people, introduce yourself, send emails, you know, book, book calendar meetings and try and do that in the first few weeks. Um, and that'll help you a lot if you're not given that opportunity um, because yeah, not every company does things the same, the same way. Um, yeah, I was asked to share some products I'm working on. Um, so I'll do this very quickly, um, cheeky little pocket plugs. But yeah, um, one of them is this project I'm working on, trying to create like a, um, a platform, an API platform um, for people trying to build uh, Islamic projects essentially. Um, so I'm looking for people who want to build their own little projects um, using the API so that they can tell me what I'm doing wrong um, and how I can make it better, um, inshallah. So feel free to check that out um, and you, this will take you to a, um, a Google form um, just to send me your email and I'll send you an API key if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and this other project is a, it's a browser extension designed to help teams kind of ship faster. Um, so it's a project that fits within the testing stage of your software development life cycle um, to help reduce the number of times that developers and testers have to go back and forth figuring stuff out. Um, so, you know, it will capture, it automatically capture stuff like, you know, what browser you're using, what, um, um, what Windows, uh, what operating system you're using, the screen size, stuff like that, um, that testers usually have to do manually. Um, so it kind of saves you a lot of time so you can ship projects faster. Um, last two tips, inshallah. Um, uh, tip number six is programming is a skill like any other, maintain your previous skills. Um, and that this is kind of targeted towards um, people that I've spoken to who are coming from other industries. Um, so I have, I've had conversations, for example, with a friend who did chemistry um, and they were quite remorseful that they didn't do computer science. And I was like, what are you talking about? Um, because for me, um, to me, like you can become a software engineer without a degree, right? You don't need to do computer science, but what you have now is a whole different uh, field of expertise, right? That I don't have, right? So if you wanted to, you could become a software engineer and now you can do something at the junction of you know chemistry and software um, and what you'll notice is software as a whole is always at the junction of something and, and technology right um, you're always using some other field to to um, you're always building solutions in some other domain um, like that one I was saying earlier um, so yeah I was I like the idea of being um, someone who's good at more than one thing um, so don't be don't be upset if you didn't do computer science it's you it's like I would personally argue that you're in a better position than someone who did computer science um, because you have other stuff that you know um, and that will help you because ultimately it's it's not about coding, it's about solving problems, right? And it's about how many how many tools you have in your in your tool, toolkit. Um, but I did put a little asterisk there and that's just because it's, it's slightly biased because it's coming from somebody who's accepted that they are a generalist. So I'm someone who's like quite comfortable saying I'm, I'm comfortable with full stack. Um, I'll double in, um, I'll double in data engineering and DevOps um, and like non-tech stuff. Um, so this is coming, this is advice coming from somebody who likes to do a bit of everything. Um, some people like to do one thing and that's okay. Um, so it's, it's about figuring out what your balance is and what you like to do. If you want to specialize in one particular thing and get really good at it, um, that's amazing because I lean quite heavily on people who are specialists um, like AI engineers and, and so on. Um, which, you know, they do stuff that I don't know how to do. Um, so everyone's kind of needed. It's about making sure that you are doing the thing that you're comfortable with, basically. Um, and last tip, um, no one really knows what they're doing. Um, the reason, <laughs> like, honestly, the reason I say this is because, uh, just a quick anecdote to end on, um, when I was working at a startup um, and I just joined the one after I graduated, the Hoop, um, I was looking at this particular piece of code um, and I couldn't figure out why they'd made a certain decision about the code. Um, it didn't really make sense to me. Um, so I was trying to understand it from the perspective of someone who accepted the fact that 
I know less than this, the manager who worked on this, right? So I'm like, they obviously know what they're doing. I don't get why they did this. I would have done it like this. Um, I would have just left it, but I was blocked. I couldn't continue the work that I was doing until I understood it. Um, so after a while, I just called him over and I said, I don't get why you guys made this decision. Can you just explain to me so that I understand um, um, why? And he looked at the code and it was like from, I guess, a year ago. And he flicked through the tabs and then he just said to me, you're right, this doesn't make sense. Just, just change it to what you want and, and I'll review it. And I was like, what? You know, <laughs> because I came from the perspective of assuming, like my assumption was that he was right and they knew what they were doing because they were senior, right? Um, so it's important to remember that your opinions and your, your, your ideas are valuable um, um, and it's worth sharing them. Um, and it's also worth kind of like asking, asking for help, asking for advice. Um, um, and even your, even your managers use Stack Overflow, right? Um, so like everyone's just still figuring out regardless of how long they've been doing it. Um, and yeah, the last thing is um, you're not really in control of the outcome of what, what you do. Um, the only thing that you can control is how much effort you put in um, and where you place your reliance. You know, people, some people place too much reliance on themselves and their skills. Um, so it's important to remember to have to work al um, and work on that and also work on your effort and work on the learning aspect of things. Um, and you will be fine. Um, things will work out the way, the way they should work out. Um, inshallah. So yeah, that's me. Um, some links. Um, the last link is a list of resources for people that are trying to get into um, tech. So learning stuff, apprenticeships, um, uh, meetups, stuff like that. Um, so feel free to check that out. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, and those are some links from earlier. Um, so yeah, is that perfect? JazakAllah khair. Again, all of the things that were mentioned here today, they resonate. I'm not going to lie. Like everything, I was like, yes, network, definitely. Ask a lot of questions. Uh, the slides, yes, we are going to share them later on. So um, don't worry about it. We'll post it on our, in our, in our Slack. So a few things before we get into the Q&A. Uh, I see we've got a coming soon slide. And I'm going to be real with you. I haven't had a look at these slides, so I don't know what's coming next. So, um, ah, yes, of course. October, aka Hacktober. We've got our hackathon coming up. I know some of you have been you know, pestering us. When's the hackathon? When's that? Well, it's next month. So make sure you sign up. We're going to be uh, releasing the applications forms soon. Hopefully, maybe this week, next week. You know, I see Adam looking at me like, why isn't the application form ready? Already, man. But yeah, they're going to be out hopefully uh, this week. Um, I encourage all of you to apply. Um, seniors, juniors, if you're a software engineer, if you're a product manager, please everyone apply. It's, it's like one of the best experiences you'll have. I personally took part in two hackathons run by um, a, a friend organ organization of ours called Dean Developers. Um, amazing. Other than she was on the first cohort of our hackathon, uh, not last year, the year before that. So I encourage you all to join. Um, we, we have like, we, we do a few projects on the side. We're currently rolling out a whole mentorship platform. So if anyone wants to kind of hop on board and, and you know, build out the application with us uh, and join us on this journey, please do reach out. Uh, we're looking for developers um, or designers or anyone. So please do reach out, speak to any of us here organizing, speak to Adam, he's over there at the back, uh, the tall handsome dude over there. Uh, and yes, join our meet meetups this year. The hackathon is going to be our last one, but... I don't know. I think we've got a few hackathon, uh, a few meetups. Uh, we've got one for product managers lined up soon, who Mohammed's um, going to be um, running soon, inshallah. So over to the questions now. So if you've got a question for any of our panelists, please raise your hand. And we'll pass over the mic. Um. Question. You, all three of you had one thing in common in the tips section, which was network. So I'm curious what that word means to each of you individually and any tips that you can give. Would like to go first. Good question. Um, so yeah, I think the way I network has changed over time. Um, I remember in first year, I would literally go to tech events. Um, walk up to the speakers after the event, ask a question, and then ask their LinkedIn. Um, but over time, it's become, I mean, you still, still do that to some degree, but 
COVID times become more about um, just naturally getting to know people at different events and being exposed to stuff that you didn't um, you didn't know existed, right? Um, so I think networking for me is more about going to places. If you stay at home and you don't do things at all outside of your home, um, you won't be exposed to stuff. Even if you're just sitting in the, at the back and listening, um, you've learned something that you didn't really know before. Um, and then you can, you know, you can interact with two or three people and that could be enough, right? It doesn't have to be more than that. Or you can make it more of a thing for yourself um, and try to speak to as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the, when I say networking, is it's more about just getting out of the house and going to where the opportunities are, right? It's just about kind of seeking out these opportunities um, um, because you, yeah, you will discover things that you didn't know existed um, and you learn about things that you didn't really know you could do. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I would, what I would say. Um, for me, it's, I think you also said it, like going out and attending events. So there'll, there'll be times I'll go to events where I have absolutely zero idea what's going on. Like I think one, one event I went in with absolutely no idea, but I was able to network with a lot of people was for a Web3 startup event. I didn't have a startup. I don't know anything about Web3, but I just walked in and they were all ready to talk about the products they were doing, what they were doing the roles that they were doing is very interesting. So I think definitely just putting yourself out there and trying to, having the courage to go and learn and talk to people is just like, I think that's a, a great definition for networking. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so great points. I completely agree with Yusuf and Holden both said. Um, I think for me, networking is all about like, just really just meet people, just getting to know people. You know, everyone here wants the same thing. We, you know, we all want to get, get into tech or, you know, we all want to succeed, you know, go to the top. So ultimately it's about working together towards a common goal. And, uh, you know, whether, whether, whether that be at a, um, like a social event, whether it be online, networking is key. And um, fun fact, um, I've actually got a mentor. His name is Mohammed Ainab. And the way I actually got him to be my mentor was, I just messaged him on LinkedIn. I was like, yo, Mohammed, you know, you know, great to see your story. Um, you know, love, really, really love to see like other Somalis like me doing bits, you know. So um, you know, are you free for a chat? And just through that, you know, we got to know each other and then you know, so many similarities, and he's actually helped me so much with my career. So I'll definitely recommend networking, you know, reaching out to people and just asking for help. Thank you very much. Any other questions? We've got a couple over there. Quiet on this side. <laughs> yeah, hi, my name is Ibrahim. Yeah, so basically, my name is Ibrahim. Yeah, um, basically, my name is Ibrahim. So um, I have an idea of a lot of things you guys are speaking about, but there's one problem that I have. Um, it's not networking. There's a bit of networking, but what I want to talk to you about is because I, I heard Yusuf's story. I like Yusuf's story, um, but one thing I don't understand is like with code or technology, a lot of things are changing. That's true, but if anything in life, whether it's learning how to ride a bicycle or becoming a pilot or someone who drives a car, you have to practice something too much to basically get good at it. So with technology, being a generalist, like I've seen cloud, I've seen front, I've seen back, but when you're going to apply for a job, you're going to have to know something inside out. Like you can know other things and that's cool, but you're going to have to know something inside out to make sure that you're good at something. That's how I think. So I don't know if I'm wrong in thinking that. I don't know what you guys' suggestions are because I'm still going to university. I haven't learned something inside out, but I'm doing React. I'm doing cloud. I fix laptops like MacBooks here and there. I do a bit of teaching, but these are all like general, like I'm just like a generous, like, a, uh, like Yusuf. So like I just general like i've seen spring boot i've seen front but it's not like i know inside if someone gave me a problem about spring boot tomorrow like i'll be panicking i'll search on google oh what's this mean what's this mean like but it doesn't make me a special or something so if i go to, for a job interview and they ask me okay what have you contributed or do you know this inside out i can't really answer that question i'm gonna say yeah i did this and but what did you do that's that's what it comes down to so i want to know is it okay to know a lot of things like being a generalist, but at the same time specializing in one area, or do you recommend like knowing everything because technology is always changing? That's what I want to know. Um, 
a good question. Um, so I think what I'll start with is I wasn't always a generalist, right? So when I first started learning, I just did some Python Django, right? Um, I started learning Python. Um, I got comfortable with that. Um, and then after a while, I got really annoyed about the fact that um, I built this website, but it looked a bit mad, you know? It didn't look great. Um, so, you know, from, from a backend standpoint, it's like, you know, it's like, it's just text on the screen, but it's doing a lot to get that text on the screen. Um, so that's when I kind of started to dig in a little bit more into, into um, front end. Um, but what I would say is, um, if you're early on and you're still studying, um, it's better to kind of like find something that you want to do. Um, so like there should be, this is me talking off the top of my head, but the way I see it is there should be um, a reason as to why you're doing something, right? Um, so for me, like I wanted to build a particular project um, and that kind of guided my learning, right? So like, I, there's, there's a particular website that I want to build. Um, what do I need to get there? Um, I'll learn some Django and Python, Python first and Django. I'll do some JavaScript. I'll try to figure out React. Um, and even that itself is like still a lot of different things, but it was like, I was doing it for a reason. So it made it a bit easier to stick it out. You know, if, if, you're, if you're just trying to learn languages for the sake of learning them, then it will be very easy to move around, right? It's very, very easy to like spend a little bit of time here and do something else um, in, in like a few months time. Um, so I think that's the first thing. Um, the second thing would be um, um, when you're applying uh, for roles, um, it does help to say that um, this is the particular thing that I want to do, right? Um, um, so like, yeah, so it's saying, for example, I want to become a front-end developer, spending a decent amount of time doing that, right? Um, because one thing that you should be doing as part of your learning process is building your own little portfolio. And that naturally forces you to be like, okay, I need to stick to one thing, right? Um, I need to build like a bunch of front ends for a random, bunch of random different projects, right? I need to just do a bunch of little backend projects and, um, and put them on GitHub, right? And so that they, I can share the code, right? So um, I could probably give you better advice the more I think about it. But um, what I would say is um, you, don't, you don't start necessarily, you don't start off as being a generalist, right? You try to try your best to kind of give yourself some focus, but to do that, it would, personally, it would help to like have a reason as to why you're doing it, right? Maybe if you want to get into, uh, if you want to build like an app, um, people usually have a specific thing in mind um, when they want to um, uh, get into mobile development, right? Because they want to build something specific. Um, for people that don't know exactly what they want to do at all, I usually just recommend learn Python, you know, like just to learn one language and stick to it and learn that really well, you know? If you have no idea what you want to do, you don't know if you want to do web or mobile or anything like that, just pick one. It doesn't matter what it is. Usually I say Python because it's, it's easily readable, it's very diverse, you can use it for different things. Um, but um, just pick one thing and you will learn the concepts of programming and, 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 and software engineering with that. And then those will become transferable to other languages in the future, right? Um, so it does, I, I would say it is important to try and like stick to one, one or two things in the beginning and just try to get good at them and then get your, use that to get your foot in the door in terms of work. And then after that, you, you're still going to be learning. Like people, yeah, that, I remember the other thing I wanted to address and then I'll pass it on. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, I've had loads of conversations with people who look at a job description and then feel like they have to know everything on the list in order to apply. Like, no, like, like if you know it's three things on there, apply. There's like 10 things on the list, you know, three, like apply, right? Because what the company wants to know is, are you somebody who's willing to learn? Or have you done stuff out in your own time to show that you're interested in learning? Um, have you taken the initiative? Um, because I have friends who did computer science at university and they still struggle to find work out afterwards, right? And the reason was they didn't really do much because they're, they're competing with other graduates, right? Like, like you need to differentiate yourself by saying, okay, um, this is how I'm gonna show that I am actually interested in the field, um, even if it's one specific part of it, right? Um, because I've done stuff. I've done stuff from using my own initiative. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have. I wasn't. I didn't have to be told to do something in particular, right? Um, so, yeah, like university, they always it gives you guidance, right? It's like this: do this, do this, do this. But you got you got to try and spend a bit of time thinking and be like, okay, of these different things that, for example, that I mentioned is this: like web, back end, front end, whatever, mobile. Which of these is, is, is what, which of these am I leaning towards, right? Um, and if you're not sure, just, just pick JavaScript or just pick Python, you know, and become a front-end developer. Become, like you can change later. Like you don't have to become 
if you become a front-end developer and you've done React, you don't have to stay a React developer for the rest of your life, right? You can change in a year's time after getting your first job. You know, you can move within the company. You can apply to other companies doing other stuff. So there's a lot of agility and a lot of um, uh, maneuverability once you're in the industry. Um, so you're not you're not stuck in one place. Um, but yeah, like don't when you're looking at job specs, they're not there to say you need to know all of this stuff. The company just wants to see if um, you're willing to learn them, right? If you if you know one or two things on that list and you're willing to learn the rest of them, and that comes across in the CV and in the in the interview, that's usually more than enough, right? Um, um, I don't think there's anybody that can unless you know unless I have ten years experience, which is more than I have. No one can look at jobs and know everything on the list. Like I think that's very rare, you know. I think that's only senior roles or like engineering manager roles that can can do that, right? Um, and and not only know them, but know them really well because it's too vast, it's too it's too it's too um, all over the place, you know, like front end, back end, whatever, right? Um, so yeah, don't be too disheartened when you look at those job specs and you feel like you have to know everything. You don't have to. Like the point of the job is to, is to learn. I think that's the part that people don't really fully understand. Like the point of the job itself is to learn. Like you don't have to know everything before you apply. Once you have, once you got in in the role, then you can um, then you can start learning properly, right? Um, so that's kind of yeah. That's what I want to say on that. Inshallah. Exactly. Okay. Does anyone want to add on top of that? Yeah. yeah. Just piggyback on what you said. Is literally just cater your CV to whether the expectations of the job are. So if they're saying we want to have a search engineer for that knows this and that, just clean up your CV to specifically highlight those points. And I think that's all you need, pretty much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do we have? Yeah, we have a question over there, and we have one over here. Assalamu alaikum. Um, my question is um, not specified to anyone, inshallah. So there's a few different elements that make a good software engineer. Um, the naming ones, obviously, being the technical element of it and obviously the problem solving side of things. So, Dhrman, you had on your slides um, the different websites to practice your technical ability. Jazakallah khair for that. But I wanted to ask, how do you exercise your, you know, the logical problem solving side of, of programming, which is obviously the part that not a lot of people or a lot of people you know give up software engineering or programming to like when at, in, at like the learning stage of of it so that's probably my question how would you exercise the logic the logic you know like the problem so solving side of things like um yusuf mentioned earlier so i mean i haven't specified to anyone but i mean anyone could take the question inshallah we'd like to take that Uh, thank you for the great question. Um, so in terms of uh, exercising that problem solving ability, I think there are many different ways to do this, right? So um, one thing I would recommend personally is uh, Lead Code, to be honest. Uh, Lead Code is a great platform that you can use to learn all the different data structures, learn different techniques you can use to solve a particular problem. So typically speaking, um, with these exercises and with any program, any programming problem, there is some sort of input, like some sort of data, um, and your task is really just to manipulate that data to kind of match some shape, right? Um, and you know, through Lead Code, you can like learn different techniques, learn different data structures you can use, and ultimately, I think that's one thing that has helped me a lot personally to kind of hone that problem solving ability. Um, yeah, I think that that's that's it from me. I'm not sure if it's uh, Yusuf or I can add something really small to that, inshallah. Um, first thing is just to reiterate exactly what Akram said. Um, so a lot of these websites that he mentioned um, are actually good for logic. Um, so some of them are just general pro uh, like programming, like learning how to code, and others are specifically like, here's, here's a function, the name of function, build the function, and this is what you should do. This is the inputs you're going to give it. This is the output you should expect. Um, and it's really good for thinking, thinking things through. The other thing I'd mention is, interviews usually are just problem solving um so they will give you like a, a, a problem and then they they don't really care too much depending on the company they, they might not care too much about the code itself sometimes they'll be even happy for you to do pseudo code right but what they care about is how you break down the problem and how you think about it um and something that's really good is uh, there's a lot of youtube videos where they literally like people who work at companies like amazon and fx they just go through interview questions like they just like spend 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, going through stuff like system design interviews, um, 
example example questions you might get in interviews and just sitting back and watching those and seeing how they think about it helps you think about it as well and helps you formulate formulate like a a framework in your head about how you can like break these problems down um so i think those are really good which i actually completely forgot about so i might start sharing that more but um yeah there's really good youtube videos about um um yeah people engineers who just like sit there and teach you teach you how to solve those kind of problems and it helps to understand how they think think about it um so that's what i recommend thank you very much yeah okay. said enough. all right um i guess we've got time for maybe a couple more Two, three. Hello, hello, salam alaikum. Um, I just, I had a quick question about um contracting. Um, Yusuf, you said um you wouldn't recommend it, so I guess it's a two part question. But first part, how do you know when you're ready to be a contractor and when you're ready to like step out of more permanent roles? And secondly, do you recommend it only after you're a senior? um to do contracting because obviously they don't invest in you uh, that's a good question um first one i don't think you really know for sure um i think i i became i i for me it was like okay i'll take this risk um and if it doesn't work out i can always get another perm job um so that's kind of like the frame of mind that i had um i have enough savings for a few months um and then just apply and see what happens uh, the second part, um, which was, uh, should you wait? Um, I think it's still kind of related to the first one. I think it's better to, it's better to have a solid foundation um, because it's not impossible to learn in a contract role. Like my current role, for example, I'm doing full stack web, but with heavily within a data team. So I kind of have to learn about data stuff and I know nothing about it. Um, so I still have the opportunity to, to learn. Uh, but the point is that that opportunity is is entirely on my shoulders so i have to kind of go out of the way and, and spend my own time learning about you know um machine learning operations and stuff like that um if i want to if i want to actually do well in the role um but they don't mind that you know like they they're comfortable with me learning python and react and as long as i do that stuff and then try to do the other stuff then they're okay with it um so it really depends on the contract itself um i would say like maybe like um mid once or towards the end of mid level or something like that just jump for it because i feel like even even like um even once you get the senior you still might not be full comfortable with doing it right um so it's a difficult question to answer um it really depends on the individual um but um, i think the best thing to do would be um understand that it's going to be a risk at any point anyway so like most of life is just figuring out when when to do things um so as long as you're comfortable in a particular set of um, technologies, um, um, there's no harm in trying to do contracting. Um, but yeah, um, it's worth remembering that um, it's it's going from being in a in a in a environment where everyone's trying to help you learn to being in an environment where you're there to do a particular job. Um, and they'll help you do that job, but you won't have access to stuff like online re online learning resources that the company uses. Um, you won't have access to like um, um, company portfolio or stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of like they give you enough to do the job. Um, rest of it's kind of on you. Um, so you know, it's, it's. I would recommend doing two things. One is developing the the ability to like learn yourself um, and not just be overly um, being, being as being as heavily as you can, as you want to. Why, why you have the resources? because the the line will always be there um but to get good at spending time on like in your evenings and weekends um, learning different things and, and the other thing i would say is um pick a particular niche when you want to start contracting and have a look at available contracts um, before you even before you even take the deal right because you want to know what's out there you know when you want to know what kind of stuff they expect maybe even for banter do some interviews you know like you're not gonna you're not gonna actually take it because you're not sure but you can apply for them and then just see how the interviews go and then that will, might give you a bit more confidence um, um and that's kind of like what i tell a lot of people to do like even if you're not looking to change companies interview anyway um, because it will give you an idea of like what companies um are expected today as opposed to maybe a year ago two years ago um and it, will give, it gives you a bit of insight into the industry um but yeah it's difficult to give a really strong answer to that because it's it's very dependent um but hopefully that was that was helpful Thank you very much. On that interview 
notes, I would also recommend every six months, just interview, you know, to check, check what the industry is saying, because how the news mentioned, you know, ask for that promotion. It could be a bargaining chip as well. They'd be like, yo, I just got an offer, which is 30% more. What are you guys doing? Give me some more money. <laughs> so definitely every six months or a year or so, just interview just to see where you're valued in the market. Uh, Hi, um, assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for sharing your different journeys tonight. It was really nice to hear about them. Um, my question is about imposter syndrome. Uh, so something that probably comes up an awful lot in the world of software engineering where like, you know, the initial sort of learning curve is really steep. Um, and even after that, I suppose, like we've spoken about a bit tonight, the landscape's always changing and it feels like there are new technologies that are better and faster and different things that you need to feel like you're gandhi about so yeah i was just wondering if you had any practical advice to managing imposter syndrome or overcoming it i mean i don't know if it's practical but it's just a mindset change like i i feel like people feel like they're i have to be at this level but i don't know anything it's you, you just have to practice pretty much and you have to be um as long as you're willing to learn i don't think that's imposter syndrome you know you just have to be confident in yourself have the courage to ask for help everyone's asking for help not just you seniors contractors everyone so don't think that you know absolutely nothing you know a lot more when you start like since you started so i think that it's just a mindset change you need to be a bit more positive yeah i hope that helps <laughs> it does thank you yeah. yeah i was just gonna say the exact same thing um yeah it's, it's i think it's more about um coming from like if you haven't worked in tech and trying to enter tech then it's you're not really used to the way of working in technology and the the fact that you have to constantly be learning things um and it, like people often feel like I have to, yeah, again, I have to know a certain amount of stuff before I can actually do the job. Um, but the reality of it is you're going to be Googling stuff every day of your career, like literally. I don't think there's a single day in the last six years that I haven't Googled something that I don't know. Um, even stuff like syntax for a language that I've been doing for three years, right? Um, so it's like, um, it's, I, I don't want to say that the imposter syndrome never goes away because it diminishes. But like everyone still has it, you know, like even senior engineers are still thinking, you know, like I could be doing better. Again, everyone just looks at the person above, them, you know. So it's like there's always more that I can be doing. And um, but I think the transition from like not working in the industry to working in the industry is like is, is the point where imposter syndrome is the highest because you're you're entering the field, right? And you don't really know what's expected of you. Um, but it's worth remembering that um, yeah, no one knows everything. Um and everyone's still figuring out at every point of their career. Um, so yeah, um, just um, it's about changing the way you approach it and the way you think about it. Um, and hopefully once you enter your first role, it will become easier to kind of like make that mindset change. Um, but yeah, I second the whole thing. I think we've got one question over here. And then, because we've got to be out of here by nine, right? And we want to do a bit of networking, a little bit of, so maybe last question, sorry. Okay. Thank you guys for your answers. My question is to anyone, but say there's a, I'm talking about myself, let me not say say, I'm interested in getting into tech, but I don't know what I want to do basically. So what would your advice be in trying to find a specific route to take? Because I feel like I'm just kind of dabbling here, dabbling here, and then seeing a bit of this and then not doing that. So a bit of advice on how to kind of navigate what route you specifically want and going that way i think the first thing that i was going to say is my initial reaction to that would be like if you don't know what you want to do learn python um but then i remembered that it's worth remembering actually that, that that's coming from an engineer right um there are other roles in tech as well um and it's very easy for me to forget about that even though i work with them every day um so like tech is not just about coding you know there are there are product managers there are um designers um, there are qa testers um so there are uh, there are avenues into tech other than just code um so yeah i've had friends who 
try to learn to code after like six months realized it wasn't for them but they just switched to something else within the same industry right um so it's worth figuring out like okay it's, it's a it's a two it's a double-edged sword right so don't give up too early when you're learning to code um coding is great and the beginning is always the hardest when learning something new um so if you can persevere at it and find that you enjoy it then it's it's, it's worth pursuing um but people are different and people enjoy different things uh, and everybody is needed right like designers are in in need um project managers make crazy amounts of money um and you need different kind of project managers as well right um like technical project managers and non-technical project managers so yeah there are different parts even within tech outside of technical um so it's worth remembering that too um inshallah and definitely go to these product management events that this is doing um because it's really interesting stuff um yeah when it comes to like technical stuff itself like programming if you don't know what you want to learn like web or mobile or whatever i usually say just like pick uh, like learn python and go down that route and then you get to like back in and build websites or start with javascript if you're more like a visual learner and you want to like um build stuff that you can see more quickly um so like javascript html or css um, um and then that's a good route to go the other way um it doesn't really matter you know like the question is it's about it's about making progress it's about getting started and not jumping between because even for me as a uni student one of the mistakes that i made that i tell people about is um this like constantly changing what i wanted to learn like i started with python and django and i'm like maybe i should do ruby and rails and i did that for a little bit like when i say did that i mean like tutorials um and then i went back to python and django and it's like it's the same thing really like it's just a different language the goal is the same right but when you're starting out, everything seems different. Everything seems like it's a huge different thing. Um, so just pick one thing, persevere at it, see how you feel about it. Um, and then eventually you can like change the other stuff if you feel like you found something better. Um, but yeah, it's also worth remembering that there are non-technical roles as well within tech that are you know, very well paid and very fun as well. Um, so yeah. On that note, actually, we have a, um, a webinar that we did Smiles in tech for uh, non-coding roles in tech which is a really good watch so it's on our youtube channel definitely recommend checking that out inshallah okay i think that was our last question um mad sinit you know we're on socials follow us uh, follow us we're on tiktok now as well uh, uh <laughs> sincere apology for the dancing on there like i got loads of messages what the hell are you thinking with those disgusting moves from the bottom of my heart i'm sorry but yeah and i blame idil for posting it as well but anyways jazakallah khair uh, we've got like a few minutes for a bit of uh, smoozing around, so outside. <laughs> so yeah, get outside and, and, and network downstairs, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much. <laughs>